Hi everybody, it's Jamie here from CatTech Systems. Uh, I'm just going to spend the next 30 minutes or so going through a demonstration that I've prepared just to show how SolidWorks uh, can be used within the consumer product industry. So any kind of product designers out there wanting to create um, kind of more organic shapes like the remote control there that you see on the left hand side, I'm going to show you some of the tools that you can use in SolidWorks to help you achieve that. I've broken it into four sections today. Um, the first section is looking at how we can actually create some initial sketches. Um, so that might be using kind of hand-drawn sketches that we might have drawn on a bit of paper or something. That's going to take about 10 minutes to look at. Then we're going to spend the next 10 minutes after that looking at uh, how we can create basic surfaces using those sketches that we've already created. Then we're going to spend five minutes looking at how SolidWorks has got some lovely features for adding um, kind of assembly features like maybe snap and grooves, maybe um, snap hooks, uh, mounting bosses, things like that. We've got a great automated tool in SolidWorks to help us achieve some of those features really, really quickly. And then we're going to spend the last five minutes looking at how we can create photorealistic images like the one that you see there on the left hand side. So the first section is looking at initial sketching. Um, I always start my designs, generally speaking, with a bit of paper and I start sketching out what it might look like. So on the left hand side there you just see a, a quick sketch that I've created of a suggested TV remote control. And all I'm going to do in SolidWorks is actually take my hand sketch, I'm going to scan it in, I've actually uh, created these already and then I'm going to copy this into SolidWorks, pick out the outlines, so picking out the major kind of outlines there and then extract them into SolidWorks and then we can use those to create some of the surfacing. So let's take a look at how we can actually create our initial sketches. So over in SolidWorks I'm just going to start a brand new document. And then on my front plane I'm actually just going to drop a sketch. Now this time I'm actually going to insert a sketch picture. So you can see here is a, a collection of the pictures that I've got. My side sketch is going to go onto this front plane so I'm just going to open that up and then drop it into place. Now. As you see here, this is my origin, this kind of red triad that you see there. And I'm, I want my origin to be on this very corner point here of the sketch. So I'm just going to drag it over, something like that. Then I'm just going to take this blue line, and this is going to help me to scale the picture. So I'm just going to drag that to the end point there. I'm going to drag this out to approximately the end of my sketch, something like that. And then SolidWorks has prompted me to ask me how long that line is. So I'm going to tell it it's 185, which matches up with my sketch and it's automatically scaled my picture then. Also I'm just going to change the transparency of this as well just so we can uh, be a bit clearer when I start sketching over it what I'm actually doing. So again I can just hone this down just to get it into place so something like that and I'm happy with that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it because SolidWorks is called this sketch one which doesn't really make too much sense to anybody so I'm just going to rename this uh, side sketch. So then all I'm going to do on my front plane again, I'm just going to pick out some of those edges. Now using um, a three point arc, I'm just going to specify that there's my first point, my second point is over here somewhere, and then I'm just going to pick out that arc, something like that. Now I've sketched that kind of freehand and that's the nice thing about SolidWorks is we can kind of do this stuff freehand, but I now want to constrain it or actually dimension it. So first of all, I'm just going to tell SolidWorks these two points are horizontally aligned. I'm also going to tell the SolidWorks that there is a distance involved, and that's the 185, if you remember. So up there, I'm just going to specify that that arc has a total horizontal length of 185. And also, I can mark out the radius as well. So I'm going to go for 650mm radius. It's gone black, the sketch has gone black, and down here it's telling me it's fully defined as well. And that's really where I want to be with sketches in SolidWorks. So then I'm just going to OK it. Then I'm going to drop another sketch onto this front plane, and this time I'm going to pick out this suggestion of a split line. So again, using a three-point arc, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So doing this kind of haphazardly to start with, or kind of quite quickly to start with, I'm just going to tell SolidWorks a couple of things about this. For example, there's a, a vertical distance here of around about six. There's a vertical distance here of about ten. I'm just going to tell SolidWorks that these two points I want to be vertically aligned, just to make sure that they fall in the same uh, vertical orientation. Same with this one over here as well, so just picking out these two points I can build a vertical relation between those. And again I'm just going to pick out a radius for this. So again I might go for about 650 and my sketch has gone black, so I'm just going to OK that one. The final sketch I want to create is the one that's going to follow this lovely sweeping edge down the bottom here. So again onto that front plane I'm going to drop a sketch. Now I'm going to use something called a style spline. This is a new tool in 2014 as well and it just helps me to create splines that the curvature is really really nice. So first of all I'm just going to draw it. 
So you'll notice here as well, when I start drawing, I'm not actually drawing the spline as you might do with other packages. I'm actually drawing what we call the control polygon. And this basically helps me to actually control it without picking on the uh, spline itself. I can, I can actually control it better using this uh, control polygon. Now the reason we do that is if I just show uh, what we have is called curvature combs and that basically you can see here that it gives me like a comb on the top and this is showing me the curvature. Now what we're after is something that sweeps nicely from negative through to positive and into negative again which is what we've got here and you can see that because it's nice and smooth this is the reason that we use the style spline as opposed to just a regular spline tool. So first of all I'm just going to tell SolidWorks, I can actually hide off those curvature combs now, I'm just going to tell SolidWorks that these two edges or these two lines of my a control polygon are vertical. That just means that, not horizontal as I've just said there, are vertical. That just means that when they flow up into this edge here, it's going to be completely tangent. So I'm forcing tangency here to make sure that um, it's going to sweep into the any other surfaces that go ahead with it. It's going to sweep into it nice and tangentially. So you can see here I'm just tweaking this control polygon just to shape this particular edge and you can see here that we can get it really quite tight um, something like that. So I'm kind of happy with that and I'm just going to OK it. Now on this top edge here I want to create a centre plane running right through the centre. So if I just go back over to this sketch I'm just going to drop a control point on it. So the point is going to be right in the centre which SolidWorks identifies for me. And I also want to create a plane that is in line with this kind of narrowest part down here and the thickest part down here somewhere. So around about here somewhere I want to create a point vertically above it and the same for the narrowest part, which is around about kind of here somewhere. It'll make a bit more sense when I start drawing it, what I've actually put these points in here, but this midpoint here I'm going to use straight away. So first of all, I'm just going to hide off my side sketch because I don't really need to see that anymore. So I'm left with my sketches from my side view. So the next thing I want to do is to take my, uh, my right plane, which is currently at the end here where my origin was, and I want to copy this right plane to this midpoint here. So to do that, I'm just holding my control key down, I'm just dragging one of those kind of uh, pimples in the top corners here and then I'm going to pick another reference which is going to be my point and you can see here then that it creates me a center plane right in the middle over there. I'm just going to rename that as well so I always like to name my planes and my features over here just that it makes a bit more sense so I'm going to call this mid plane and then onto here I'm actually going to create a sketch. First of all I'm going to insert my sketch picture so this is looking down at the end of it now and I'm going to bring this in. So again, the first thing I need to do is just to give SolidWorks an idea of scale of this sketch picture. So using this line, this blue line, I can just drag it out roughly where I want it. SolidWorks then prompts me to say, how big is that line? Well, I'm going to say it's around about 60 mil. And I'm also just going to change the transparency of this as well. So over here, I can change the transparency just to make it a bit more transparent. And then I can move this. And where I'm after is basically this top point you see here. So this top point here is where I'm trying to locate the top arc of my image. So something like about there, I think. And then again, I'm just going to rename that particular sketch with my picture on it just so that I can hide it off at, at a later stage. So I'm going to call this uh, end sketch. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to actually draw onto that plane again and pick out this very, very top edge that you see here, or this top arc. So again, I'm going to use a three-point arc to do this. I'm just going to pick out a corner and another corner. Just going to draw it kind of quite haphazardly to start with. Just going to pick out that this point here that you see, I want to be um, in the middle of my particular arc, something like that. And then I'm just going to drag this to look a bit more sensible. So first of all, I'm just going to specify these two endpoints need to be horizontally aligned. And you can see now that it starts to behave a bit more symmetrically. Then I'm just going to specify a distance. So between here and here, you can see my image here is telling me it's around about 60 mil. And then also, I'm going to pick out a radius as well. So I'm going to say that's got a radius of 100. So I'll use some nice whole numbers for this. So that's that particular part done. And I can actually hide off that sketch as well now, my end sketch, just to make it a bit clearer. Last thing I need to do is to pick out the top uh, shape as well. So onto my top plane, I'm just going to go ahead and drop a sketch picture of my top and you can see it's right there. And again all I need to do is to set, tell SolidWorks or give SolidWorks an idea of scale. So I'm just going to say that from here down to this bottom is around about 185. I'm also going to change the transparency just so that it's a, a bit easier to see what I'm doing. 
and then I'm just going to get that into position. So again, I'm just going to drop this midpoint here on my origin, something like about that. And then what I can do is obviously rename it so that it makes a bit more sense. So over here, I can just call this uh, top sketch. And then onto that plane, I'm actually going to go ahead and pick out this outline. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to use some mirroring techniques or a center line, just to draw a center line from here to here. That just means that I only really have to draw kind of half of it, but I'm actually going to pick out these points first. So again, using a three point arc, you see I'm drawing this really quickly. I always describe this as kind of sketching with a pencil, um, something like that. I'm then just going to tell SOLIDWORKS that these two points here are vertically aligned. So this is now me just kind of honing my sketch down or constraining it in, in sensible ways. So I'm just going to say that those are vertically aligned as well. Just going to say that the end point and my arc, I want to be in the middle. I'm just going to specify I want my midline to be that 185 millimeters. I'm also going to tell SOLIDWORKS over here that exactly the same. So that's a midpoint that I want to have there. And again, I'm just going to drag out that arc, something like that. And I can start to shape this to look more like my sketch. Then I'm just going to start adding some dimensions. So first of all, from here to here, we're going to go for about, say, 24, something like that. We'll go for a radius here of maybe 100, a radius on this back arc of, say, 50. Again, you can see that it's just allowing me to control it a bit better now. The next thing I'd like to do is to pick out the highest point. You can see if I hover over this line, I've got a yellow point in the middle or a square kind of point, and that is basically telling me the midpoint. But also I've got this rhombus shaped point, and this is the highest point of that arc. So I'm just going to dimension from there. So if I just drop a point down there, first of all, on the highest point, and then I can dimension from there down to my center line, and that's going to be... Uh, 30, which is half of my 60, obviously, and then I'm just going to pick out a radius for this particular arc, and we're going to go for 500. So as I said, we'll use some nice round numbers for this, and you can see I've picked out the edges quite nicely there, apart from this bottom one. But what I can do is just take this line that I've created at the top and my center line that goes through the middle, and then just mirror it onto the other side, something like that. And what I then need to do is just to hide off my top sketch, and you can see here now that we've got all the sketches that we need to start creating these shapes. So looking at how we've created our initial sketch, we're easily in, uh, and quickly able to define our boundaries. So using sketch pictures, we can do that. Again, there's some nice tools in 2014 that allow us to kind of scale our pictures a lot easier. We've looked at arcs and style splines. That's how we can create really nice curvature based style splines. We've also looked at tangency and curvature and also how we can use mirroring as well to kind of split our design time in half, if you like. OK, so we've had a look at the initial sketching. Now we're going to have a look at basic surfacing. So that's how we can actually create some surfaces from an, our initial sketches. So let's take a look at how we can actually create our surfaces. So over in SOLIDWORKS, all I'm going to do is take my initial sketches that I've just created in the last session uh, and then to incorporate that into a surface model. So first of all, I'm just going to use quite a simple tool, which is the extruded surface. So all I'm going to do is just to click on my outline and then I can actually extrude that surface. Now I'm going to extrude that mid plane around about 30 millimeters. So you can see here I've got a 30 mil depth um, extrusion. I'm doing this mid plane simply because if I just look at it from my right view, I want to create this surface here that runs from my top edge down to my split line. So as long as my surface uh, spans that gap, which it does, then I'm happy. So I'm just going to accept that. Whilst I'm there, I'm actually going to radius these sharp internal corners as well. So using our fillet tool, I can just select an edge. SOLIDWORKS prompts me that it's located other edges that I might want to radius at the same time. So I'm just going to select that it's the four corners that I want to radius. And we're going to go for a radius of around about eight millimeters for that um, for those four corners there. Next thing I want to use is a slightly more complex surface called a boundary surface. And basically this creates a surface between two profiles in different directions. So first of all, I'm just going to select one direction, which is going to be um, basically the top surface I'm creating now. So my first sketch is going to be that line which denoted the top. And then the second sketch is the one that um, was picked off of the end sketch. So that's creating the surface like that. So you can see it's created a really nice surface there. A couple of things I'd like to do is a bit of trimming. I want to get rid of some of the surfaces now. So I'm just going to trim. First of all, I need to pick a trim tool. So I'm just going to pick that very top surface that I've just created, that one there. And then 
I can either cut everything away from it on the top or on the bottom. So I'm just going to select that I want to, to trim everything that's above that particular face. Then I'm going to do the, exactly the same. So I'm going to trim surface, and this time I'm using this outer surface as my trimmer, or as my cutter kind of guide, if you like. And then I'm just going to remove these four corners at the bottom. And then you can see what we end up with is a nice set of surfaces that are nicely trimmed as well. Now I want to trim everything from underneath my split line as well, which is this line that runs through the center here. So I can actually use that. I'm just going to select the actual sketch itself, and I can use that as a trim tool. Then you can see by highlighting this surface here, I can either trim everything away from it, uh, sorry, below it, or everything above it. So I'm just going to trim everything that is below that particular line. Now you can see this is what we end up with. Next thing I want to do is to create the complex surface that's on the bottom. Now to utilize mirroring, I'm just going to do half of it. Um, but what I need to do first of all is to draw cross sections of what I want that surface to look like at certain points. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to bring back a sketch that I've already created actually, which is that top one. And on that top sketch, if you remember, I picked out a point where the narrowest uh, area was and a point where the kind of widest or fattest area was as well. So I'm just going to draw profiles at those points, but also my midpoint as well. So my midpoint is the one that runs right through the center of my remote control. And onto that surface, my mid plane, I'm just going to drop a sketch. So I'm going to use a style spline again. By using a style spline, remember that I can just make sure that my parts or my surfaces are, are, are nicely controlled in a curvature way. First of all, I'm just going to say that my control polygon, I want this particular edge to be vertical which is going to make sure that when it meets this surface here, that it's going to be tangent. I'm also going to select this one and say that it should be horizontal. Again, because I'm just doing half a surface here where I match the two surfaces up together, I want to make sure that across the split line that they are perfectly tangent as well. And by selecting this line and forcing it to be horizontal, that's exactly what I'm doing. Then I'm going to specify that I want my end point to be on this particular edge. And I'm just going to specify that this end point should be on that particular edge. And now you can see that's what we've got. If I look straight down on it, I can actually start playing with this and making it as I want to. So you can see here that very simply we're able to affect the shape of this particular part at that section. Now I want to do exactly the same. So I'm just going to take my right plane and I'm going to then create a sketch for the narrowest part on that plane. And then I'm going to take that plane, I'm going to copy that again over to where my widest part is, which is that point there. Now we'll start by drawing the cross section at the narrowest part. So again, using a style spline, you can see that I normally start out with these style splines by sketching them away from the actual geometry. That just means that I'm not picking up on things that I shouldn't be. Um, so that line and that point I want to be piercing, so that it just makes sure that it is on this edge. Again, this point I want to pierce this particular bottom sweepy curve. This line I'm going to say that I want it to be horizontal, and this line I want it to be vertical, and again, that's just going to make sure that my tangency is okay. You can see I've got a bit of work here just to make sure uh, that this does exactly as I want to. So something like about that I think might look quite nice. So that's at my narrowest point. You can see my profile there, or half the profile. Then I just need to do the one at the widest point. So just picking that plane, I can sketch on it. Then I'll just use another style spline. Again, just clicking away from it just to make sure that I'm not highlighting anything that I shouldn't want to. This line, horizontal, same as before, vertical. This point, I want to be piercing my edge. And this point, I want to be piercing my underside curve, something like that. And then again, just looking straight down on it, I can start tweaking it and getting it to look how I want. So I want this to belly quite nicely at the bottom there. So something like that I'm quite happy with. And obviously, being parametric, I can come back and edit this at any stage as well, which is great. Next thing I want to do is to pick out this edge here. So this edge that runs all the way around the top, I actually want to pick that out. Um, now that doesn't exist at the moment, but you can see I've got an edge there. So I just need to convert that edge into a sketch. So to do that, I'm just going to create a 3D sketch. Select right hand mouse button on that particular edge and I can actually select the tangency. So you can see it's highlighted all the way around there. And then I'm going to convert it. But because I'm doing half of it, we're only creating half a surface. All of that at the top there, I can just delete. You can see that then we end up with a sketch that runs just around half of it. 
Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to create this complex surface then. So under my surfaces, I'm going to create another boundary surface. I need to pick the sketches that run in two different directions. So the first one is going to be this top one. Now, because this is half a surface, I want to make sure, as I said before, that where they meet in the middle, it's going to be perfectly tangent. So I'm just going to select a direction vector for that. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this um, to make sure that you've got curvature continuous and you've got tangency at these points um, and this is just one way so I'm going to pick a direction vector for that then I'm just going to select my second curve which is that one that I've just extracted from that edge and again I'm going to use a direction vector as I said there are different ways of doing this but this is my preferred method then I'm going to select my other profiles in the other direction so there's my first one there's my second one and there's my third one going back to these vectors I just want to make sure that they are maximum tangency. So it's just gonna mean that they flow into the other surfaces really, really nicely. And that's my surface complete. Now, because I want it onto the other side, I can utilize a mirror. So if I just select my front plane, I can actually use that to mirror across this particular face. And now you can see that we've got two. Now, a great way of seeing whether we have curvature continuous or really nice flowing surfaces is by using zebra stripes. And in effect, it makes it look like if we were to shine kind of strip lighting on it. And this is how, um, say, in the car industry or the automotive industry, we actually get really nice surfaces by using things like the zebra stripe tool just to evaluate those surfaces. And you can see here that um, basically where we've got convergence is bad. So you can see that there aren't really any areas of convergence there, which is great. So we've got some really nice flowing shapes there. OK, so the first thing I want to do is just to uh, basically knit all of these surfaces together. So by doing this, I can knit all of those surfaces together. I can try and form the solid as well. So I can ask SolidWorks to try and make that into a solid body. And now by doing that, if I just section it, you can see that what we've actually got there is now a solid body and not a series of surfaces, which is great. There are some other nice tools that we can use as well. There's a freeform tool. All I do is I pick the surface that I want to freeform. I then kind of split it up into areas. So I'm just going to draw, say I want to maybe lift this particular area at the bottom. If I just draw a line there, I can add a point to it, maybe in the middle. And now what's nice, if I just pick that particular point, if you just keep your eye on this surface as I start to drag it, you can actually create some really nice shapes and freeform shapes by using this tool. Now, there's not too many CAD tools out there that have got this tool, but SolidWorks has, and it's great for being able to affect the overall shape of a surface by simply just um, splitting it into control areas and, uh, and using points on there to drag them around and reshape it. So a really nice tool. Also, we've got a, a nice fillet tool as well. You saw me use the fillet tool a second ago just around those sharp corners. But what we can do is if I just select this edge here, what a, a radius does by all, by all kind of um, definition is just to apply a continuous radius around that edge. So if I just zoom into it, we'll go for, go for a slightly smaller radius there. We'll go for a 2 mil radius. That we actually get a radius that starts 2 mil in from this edge, starts 2 mil in from this edge as well, and we just get this nice gentle curve but what we can do is use something called a conic fillet and this basically by affecting the conical row we can affect the shape of that fillet so you can see here that we can actually make it quite tight up in this area now that's just another great way of making sure that we can create some surfaces that have certain geometries like that so for example we've got that fillet tool uh, and are using a conic row there so i'm just going to accept that we get a nice fillet all the way around and it's just a nicer looking fillet than a regular flat fillet. So just to recap what we've covered there, we've had a look at how we can create basic but also complex surfaces as well. So looking at extruded surfaces, how we can actually create uh, just extruded surfaces in one direction using a curve. Then we've looked at boundary surfaces, that's creating a surface between two curves in two different directions. We've had a look at how to trim and extend our surfaces as well using either surfaces or just sketches. We've had a look at mirroring as well, mirroring that complex surface on the bottom over to the, on, onto the other side. We've had a look at the freeform tool as well, so how we can actually pick a surface and just manipulate it as we wish. And then also looking at some of our more advanced fillets such as the conical fillet. OK, so the next section is how to add features. So adding features to our maybe injection molded parts, like as you can see on the, the left there, a graphic of a, a lip and groove. So we can do that using automated features. So let's have a look at how we can actually get on and do that.
So back over in SolidWorks, you can see that uh, I've just got my surface body here at the moment, or my solid body, I should say. If I just do a quick section, you can see that it's just a solid lump. So all I'm going to do is to give it a uniformed wall thickness first. So using my shell command, I can actually just say that I want to create a 2 mil overall kind of general wall thickness for that. And if I just do a quick section through that body now, you can see that we've got a 2 mil wall thickness to that. Next thing I want to do is to split this into a lower half and an upper half. Now I've got a suggestion of a split line there, but I'm just going to choose a slightly different one. On my front plane, I'm just going to sketch, just going to take that split line that I've already sketched and convert it, and then I can actually offset it. So I'm just going to say that I want to offset it, say 2 mil above it, then just select the first one I did and turn it into construction geometry. So basically SolidWorks ignores that. So all you can see now is this black edge that runs 2 mil offset from this initial uh, split line that I indicated. Up here I can then search for commands. If I just type split into this box, it brings up a list of, um, of all the things it can find to do with split. So as a new user of SolidWorks, this is a great way of being able to find the tools that you need. So I'm going to split that particular body using that sketch. So I'm just going to cut the part and SolidWorks has now defined a top section and a bottom section. I can actually save those out into individual files if I want to. So if I just uh, hide off this top body, you can see that we're just left with our, our bottom moulding, if you like. So bringing back that, what I'd like to do now is to actually create a lip and groove. Now I could do this manually, but it's going to take me quite a long time. We've actually got a specific tool for creating lips and grooves as well. So this is particularly used in, I guess, plastic designs, um, but it allows us to work on both bodies at the same time. So I'm just going to work my way through this feature manager over here. So the first thing it's asking me to do is to select the body on which I want to create the groove. Now the groove is going to go on the bottom part so I'm just going to select the bottom bit which means that my lip is going to go on the top component or the top body and then you just need to specify a plane that is perpendicular to the direction of pull so I'm just going to say my top plane is that particular direction then I'm just going to specify my groove as sitting on that face uh, and on this outside edge because at the moment it's asking me now if I just roll my mouse over these blue boxes it says here to select inner or outer edge for groove to remove the material so I want to remove the material on the outside of that edge so I'm just going to click on that I've got this tangent propagation box ticked as well so it falls all the way around and then I can just select my lip so my lip you see that it hides out the bottom component as well which is really nice so my lip selection I just need to select the face first and then again I'm selecting the out the uh, inner or outer edge for the lip to add material. So because I've taken it away from the outside edge, I need to add it to the outside edge of my top uh, my top part. Then scrolling down here, all I need to then do is just to fill out this box with all the parameters. So you can see here, it's a really nice graphic of what we're actually going to get. And then I just fill out this box here, punching in some of the numbers that I want for my um, for the parameters of my lip and groove. Then I just accept it. So it takes a couple of seconds just to go ahead and create the lip and the groove for these particular parts, but it does a really nice job, and quite quickly as well, of actually creating those. If I just change the display ever so slightly, it make it a bit clearer when I just do a section of what it's actually done. It's created that groove detail, and it's done all of this additional work in here, uh, all the way around, as you can see, all the way down to the bottom, all the way around this part, very, very, very quickly. So there you saw me how to create um, or showing you how to create lip and grooves for your particular parts. But we've also got other automated manufacturing um, kind of bits and pieces as well, such as mounting bosses, snap hooks, snap grooves, and also vents as well. So vents can be really quite tricky to do manually, but we've got a great tool that allows you to be able to do that. Okay, so finally, we're just going to have a look at how we can actually render our model. So that's a, that's a creating photorealistic high quality images like the one you see on the left hand side there. So let's see how that's done. So back over in SolidWorks, you can see this is the model that we've just created, but I'm just going to open up a part that I've completed. Um, so in true Blue Peter style, this is one that I created earlier. Um, it's going to have all the buttons and stuff, as you can see there. Um, but I've removed some of the material appearances just apart from the buttons. So the buttons have already been colored, but I just want to color um, the other bits and pieces. You can see I've finished this model off. I've added a bit more kind of detail. I've added a battery cover and bits and pieces on there. Um, but this is the model that I'm going to use. So first of all, I'm just going to open up my appearances tab. So in here, you can see we've got different materials, different types of materials. I'm just going to pin this open very quickly. 
So you can see under here we've got high gloss, medium and low gloss plastics. We've got textured plastics and soft touch. This is a new thing in 2014 as well, so a really nice material, this particular one. I'm going to go for a low gloss plastic to start with. You can see here then we've got a series of low gloss plastic colours. And I'm going to take my dark grey low gloss plastic and I'm going to drag it onto this bottom body here. So you can see here now that places it like a, like a charcoal -y, low gloss plastic appearance onto that particular body. I can then copy that appearance and then just paste it onto the top here. So this top body, I also want to have um, the same color. I could have painted them different colors, obviously, but I'm just going to leave those the same color. But the battery cover I'm going to do in a slightly different material. Now I've got a, a remote control somewhere around the house that's actually got a, uh, a soft touch or a textured battery cover. So I'm just going to take my textured folder over here and I can drag across some of these just to see what these look like. So that's quite a fine text you've, you can see here. Or maybe we can go for a slightly uh, more coarse texture. So here, this is actually what we call a bump map. So this is just going to make sure that when we start rendering this, that it's actually going to look like it would do in reality. So you can see here we've got a different couple of different appearances. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to select these two surfaces here and just go for a low gloss um, white plastic onto those. So that's our materials applied to our particular part really really simply uh, then we can have a look at where we want to render this now we've got a series of environments now the first few are kind of standard environments if you like these are kind of out the box or this this three point faded one this is our default out of the box SolidWorks works like this um, so you can see we've got some of the studio environments and then we've actually got some um, background images that we can use as well so some urban and also some landscapes as well but I think this is going to be a studio render that I'm going to do so I'm just happy to leave it in our three point faded. Next thing I need to do is to add a bit of perspective. I've got a shortcut to do that so I'm just going to initiate a bit of a bit of perspective. It's best to have perspective on when you're doing your renders and then I just need to have a look at some of the options. So first of all we just need to specify the image size. Now I'm going to go for let's go for about a thousand wide by about 560 tall or 562 I've just fixed the aspect ratio um, initially that was at widescreen so 1920 by 1080 I'm just going to go for a thousand by 562 and I can render it live then you can see how quickly it does this um, down here we can just specify the kind of qualities that we want and also whether we want this to be kind of cartoon like or not now I don't want it to be cartoon so I'm just going to turn that off okay so then if I just uh, do a quick preview I can actually just see what this thing is roughly going to look like. So gone are the days when I first started doing rendering, you'd kind of hit render, you'd go home and the next day you'd come back and if you were lucky you'd, you'd get something you want. Well nowadays what we do is we just do a little preview and this window here just shows us roughly what we're going to get. You can see it's starting out quite coarse at the moment um, but this should get clearer and clearer as you can see there. It's just getting a bit bit sharper and this is a great indication. Is this roughly what I'm after? Yes it is. So I can close this down and then I can actually go ahead and do a final render. And again, rendering tools, typically they take quite a long time. But you can see here, all it's going to do first of all is just going to create a preview and then it's going to go ahead and actually create the main render itself. Now you can see here that uh, each of those little squares you can see moving around is a processor. So I've got eight processors on my machine. So the more processors you've got, the quicker it's going to do it. But you can see very quickly it's created us almost a finished render there. So total time to do that was 21.4 seconds. It gives me a readout here of the speed. So 20 seconds to do a fairly decent render. Fairly high quality as well. Not, I think I'd probably up the resolution of this if I was doing it in anger. But certainly that's good enough for web. So you saw out there how we can apply different materials, different textures. Uh, we had a look at environments. Within those environments, we've got different sets of lighting that we can do as well. So we can play and tweak with the lighting if we choose to. It's not something I do a lot of, I'll be honest, because the environments hold quite a lot of the, uh, the, the kind of lighting that I would like to use anyway within them. And we've also got the ability to preview as well. So that's really important before doing a final render. Just hit the preview button just to make sure that it's going to look roughly how you want it to. OK, so just to recap what we've done, we've had a look at how we can use our initial sketches to create the boundaries of our particular part. Then we've had a look at how to create some basic surfaces, add features like the lip and groove detail, and then finished on the render there to create the high quality image that you see on the left hand side. So why choose SOLIDWORKS as a CAD package? There's plenty of CAD packages out there, but 
by up by far SolarWorks is becoming the most popular one. So currently over two and a half million users worldwide in over 200,000 companies across 80 different countries. And in the UK, just to bring that more localized to ourselves, 161,000 plus UK commercial licenses. So that's a lot of people in commerce using SolarWorks to, to uh, create the design work in over 12,000 UK companies. Why would you choose CADTECH? Well, you can't buy um, SolidWorks directly from SolidWorks. You have to buy it through a series of value-added resellers, CADTECH being one of them. Um, well, last year, we were ranked number one for customer support satisfaction in Northern Europe, which we're obviously really, really proud of. And at the moment, we're the UK's only elite reseller as well. So hopefully, if you decide to go down the route of SolidWorks, then you'll feel comfortable in helping you along with that journey. If you want to see more of SolidWorks, then we hold nationwide seminars and hands-on test drive events as well. So if you just want to come along and watch, you can, but also you can come along and have a play with the software as well. And there's uh, nationwide we do that as well. So hopefully you'll be able to find a, an event happening near you. If you do want to get involved with that, give us a call on 01663 741 405 or visit our website. It's www.cadtech.com. Thanks very much for your time.